everybody, this is Eric Worre and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here with another one of the industry legends, Mr. Todd Smith. Where are you living now? Sarasota, Florida. Sarasota, Florida. Um, Mr. Smith, I, this is the first time I've had a chance to actually sit down with him. I've known about him for many, many years. I've borrowed so many of his concepts and trainings and ideas uh, in my career. Um, he's been around the industry for 19 years. Yeah. 19 years and has had over $21 million in commissions, in earnings during that period of time. So a tremendous career, um, not only big income, for, but for a long time. Uh, created over a billion dollars in sales in the organizations that he's built um, around the world. So first of all, thank you for spending the time. Yeah, happy to, Eric. It's I, great to be here. I appreciate it very much. Um, here's what I would like to start off by asking you. It, the uh, Everybody that's watching this program, wants to become a network marketing professional. They want to learn how to make the income that you learned, or that you've earned. So what do you see? I mean, what are the, some of the things that you've done different? But in addition to that, what have you seen as the common denominator for the super successful versus the people who want this bad, but don't necessarily have the same kind of success? What's, what's, the, what's the difference maker? Well, I think the, the first thing that goes to my mind is desire. You know, I, I say that success begins with desire because without desire, you won't do what is required to succeed. And I've even modified that to success begins with a burning desire because everybody's got a desire to have a nicer home or a nicer car, but it's how strong that desire is that drives a person. And in my case, I believe that a big part of my success began with my burning desire to reach a point where I would be financially independent and where I would be able to have the control of my life that I now have. So certainly a desire is where I think it all begins. So talk about that when you first um, got involved with the profession. What was, the, what was that process like? Uh, what did the person say to you uh, to get you to take a look at, at this uh, network marketing career path? And uh, was it something magical, special in order to be able to make that happen? No, I think in my case, uh, first of all, I came in the industry, as funny as it is, by responding to an ad in a newspaper. Wow. And uh, I called the gentleman, and he was a, a great mentor of mine, and uh, I asked him you know, what he was doing, and you know, my background was in real estate, and I you know, used to sell over 100 homes a year, so you know, he asked me a little bit about myself, and I asked him what he was doing, and he said, Todd, if you'd like to know what I'm doing, I'd be happy to sit down and discuss it with you. And I said, well, you know, can you tell me a little bit about what it is over the phone? He said it's not really a business that we can uh, talk about over the phone. If you'd like to know what I'm doing, I'd be happy to sit down and talk with you. And I said, uh, well, is it network marketing? He says, Todd, I'm not going to get into what we're doing over the phone. If you'd like to know what I'm doing, I'd be happy to, to meet with you. And I said, well, is it Amway? And he says, it's not Amway, it's not Shackley, it's like nothing you've seen before. So I said, okay, great. So I, uh, I went and met with him and uh, saw the, uh, the presentation. Uh, was impressed with uh, specifically the ability to create a leveraged income and I had learned in you know the personal growth that I've gone through in life and the tape series I've listened to that you really never can get ahead exchanging time for money. Mm. That if you want to get ahead you need to be in a vehicle that allows you to create that leverage uh, to where that income can grow without necessarily your efforts. And so uh, you know I got started and uh, he coached me and because of the success I'd had before in real estate, uh, he saw the importance, in, in my case, of getting me off to a fast start because, you know, this, at this time in my life, 19 years ago, I was making 400 grand a year as a realtor, mm. and he realized that, hey, I need to help this guy get off to a fast start. So he set up a, a private presentation uh, at my home, and he said, Todd, you better have 10 of the sharpest people that you know there, or I'm not coming back. And Tough. Yeah, he was tough, and but that was the key. That was uh, I'm convinced that I'm here today, even talking to you, because of how I was brought into the business, and uh, the the uh, the coaching that I received at that very early part of my business. And so uh, he uh, he we we talked every day. He said, "Okay, let's talk about what you're saying." And we talked about every single person that I called. What did you say? What this person say? What did you say? What this person say? Went through. Okay, you did this good. You did this good. Uh, you need to not do this and not do this. And so he coached me every day in my first private presentation. I had uh, 38 people there, nice. 22 last names. Uh, second one, we had 68 people. Third one, 118, and turned into a weekly meeting with more than 400 people after four months, 1,600 people in my organization. Uh, but it was, all, it was all initiated by the fact that I had a sponsor who, who didn't just sponsor me, which a lot of people do, 
uh, and then say, okay, go have at it. But a guy who sponsored me and coached me and made sure that I was doing the right activities correctly so that I would have success, and, and I did. Here's what I, I'm hearing everybody on, that's watching this program is saying right now, ha, that's the reason why. I'm not as successful as I want to be because I didn't have a sponsor like he had. He had a sponsor that rolled up his sleeves and did all this. I didn't have it. So I'm hearing, I promise you, most people watching this sure. program have that huge limiting belief that that's the answer. So what would you say to those people that maybe don't have that person like, like you had? Be the kind of sponsor that you wish you had. You can't change anything that's happened. You can't roll back the clock. All you can do is be the kind of sponsor that you wish you would have had. Mm, okay, all right. Um, what do you see as the next big kind of game changer in our profession? Um, you know, what's the next step? We do $120 billion a year in sales. We operate in 100 countries around the world. 67 million people are involved in our profession. And, and, and yet you talked about the perception in people's minds, even in this troubled economy. Mm -hmm. Um, the perception in people's minds about network marketing. What do, what do you think is the, gonna be the game changer in order to be able to, for us all to hit that tipping point and uh, we go from kind of being obscure to being a popular uh, alternative for people? Well, you know, I think there's a number of things, but the one that goes through my mind right now, Eric, is just in, in how we conduct ourselves as professionals. Uh, part of the reason the industry uh, <coughs> has a reputation that's not the most positive is because of the way that people have handled themselves, the way that they have branded themselves and thus branded the industry. Hmm. And, you know, as a leader in the can, industry... Can you give me some examples? Uh, examples of, of... what they've done that have, uh, that have branded the industry poorly. I think uh, setting people up for unrealistic expectations. Uh, you can come in and make all this kind of money working just a couple hours a week. You know, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I think uh, a lot of sneaky and deceptive type approaches uh, have certainly uh, reflected poorly on the industry. Uh, I think another thing that, that really has nothing to do with the industry, but the industry gets blamed for it, uh, is, uh, is people who quit. I mean, it, let's take an example of real estate, which was my background. One out of a hundred real estate agents in the state of Illinois would renew their license a year later. These are people who went to school for eight weeks, they invested money in a real estate license, but at the end of the day, when it got down to the bottom line, that they would have to pick up the phone and begin making phone calls and push themselves outside their comfort zone, these people lost confidence in their ability and, and, and thus quit. Well, you know, when, when you know somebody who went to real estate school that then doesn't pursue a career in real estate, you don't think, well, real estate doesn't work because very few people may know that that person failed in their attempt to build a real estate business. But in network marketing, people get started and they call everybody they know. Well then, if they don't follow through, then all these people that they contacted say, well, it doesn't work because it didn't work for this person. Well, that one person quit. That's the reason it didn't work. I mean, you can't find people in this industry where this didn't work for them, <coughs> if, if, they, they them. if they stay with it. The only time it doesn't work is when people quit. And, and that's one of the keys, is having the discipline to do what you know you should do even when you don't feel like doing it. And uh, so I, I think that you know, there, there's some of these things that we can control in the industry, but most important, I think it's, it's we need to present ourselves in a credible way, we need to present this industry in a credible way, we need to treat people with respect, and, uh, and, and, and we, need to be, uh, it, we need to handle ourselves with honor and integrity and I think that as, 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 as we, as leaders do that, and others do this as well, uh, I think we can uh, begin to brand the industry in a positive way because, I mean, the bottom line is, I mean, think about uh, what this industry offers. I mean, the ability for somebody to start a business with very little money, short learning curve, no ongoing overhead, and to have the ability to earn, like in my case, over $21 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, 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 and look at the quality of life this business provides. I mean. I work out of my home, I'm with my wife every morning for coffee and afternoon, I have lunch with my children because they're homeschooled. We have an amazing quality of life. I mean, there's nobody I know in this planet other than other people in the industry like me who enjoy the kind of quality of life this business provides. So it's the income, the quality of life, the lifestyle, the freedom, the flexibility, all of this for a business that you can start part-time as I did. I came in the industry part-time 
and uh, and begin to develop a business over time that allows you to go full time. So I think it's an amazing industry, and I think if we go out and build it uh, in the right way, we're gonna we're gonna begin to have people see that hey, this is an industry that people are successful in, and I can be successful in it too. Yeah.